my folks and I are responsible for trying to predict how much money there will be for transportation in the state of Missouri and then turning that over to the hands of the engineers and the maintenance folks to get the job done that you all need. About 60 to 70 percent of all of the transportation revenue that comes to the state of Missouri is gas tax, either federal gas tax or state gas tax. Your state gas tax is 17 cents a gallon and it has been since 1996. Your federal ga gas tax is 18.4 cents a gallon and has been since about the same time. So 20 years on that um, very flat source of, of revenue. And what has happened, and you all know this because you're out there in the world and you drive and you buy cars and you buy trucks and whatnot, we are in a state where um, fuel, eco fuel economy is a big issue and where the federal government is mandating increased fuel economy. So even if mileage stays flat, gas tax is going to reduce as cars become uh, more fuel efficient. During the Great Recession, we didn't have mileage that stayed flat. We had mileage that actually declined uh, for a number of years. Since the <coughs> last uh, almost a year now, since gas prices have come down quite a bit, vehicle miles traveled has also gone up again. And as a matter of fact, for the first eight months of this year, January through August, we have the highest vehicle miles traveled in the United States of any time in our history. But I have to ask, will it stay that way when gas prices go up again? And I think probably not. I think we're in a period right now where people are very comfortable with gas prices that, especially in this area, are hovering around $2 a gallon. And they're saying, OK, I can afford to drive more. I can afford to take my kids um, on a little vacation. I don't have to plan every trip and make sure I, I you know, map it out really economically. I don't have to carpool to work. I don't have to take transit. I don't have to do any of those things because gas prices are cheap. That has led to an increase in gas tax revenue in the state of Missouri and at the national level. But even given that, gas taxes in Missouri are significantly low below what they were uh, back in 2008. Probably 30 to 35 million dollars a year less than what they were then. The other sources of transportation revenue, and Lewis mentioned talking a little bit about tax policy, we're very much a state where we have user fees to pay for transportation. So our other sources of revenue are sales tax on your vehicle and licenses. So your driver's license and your vehicle license. Those are the sources of revenue. Not all of that money that is collected from those sources comes to the state of Missouri. Part of it goes to cities and counties about 27 percent of it goes to cities and counties so they're trying to maintain their road systems and their streets and their bridges with that same source of revenue after it does come to the state the legislature takes part of it to pay for other services first of all they pay some of it to the department of revenue for collecting it on our behalf and then they fund about 80 percent of the highway patrol which is another legal use of that money so by the time you take those things off, it becomes, OK, this is how much is left. This is how much is going to transportation infrastructure. And then that is the part that comes to MoDOT. And we work with our local planning partners around the state to pick the projects of, of greatest interest, of greatest need. In this part of the state, for many years, we've had a really robust partnership, especially with, um, with Greene County and the city of Springfield, using your dedicated transportation taxes to build projects that are critical to this area, especially critical to the economics of this area by putting in a new interchange, by four-laning or six-laning a section of road, those kinds of things. What we have found over time, though, is that source of revenue is on the decline, and guess what? Stuff gets more expensive. Uh, the vehicles you buy to operate your businesses, the, um, the materials that we use, until just real recently, the price of fuel and oil. All of those things go up, but the revenue source has remained pretty flat. And so over time, we've gotten into a place where we have not enough money to truly take care of the system that we have. Missouri has the seventh largest transportation system of any state in the nation. We are by no means the biggest state or um, you know, in, in land miles, 
But in this state, many of the miles that in other states are owned and operated by cities and counties in this state are part of the state transportation system. So 34,000 miles, 10,400 bridges on the state system, seventh largest system in the nation. If you put Nebraska and Kansas and Iowa together, they don't have as many miles in their state system as Missouri does. At the same time, if you stacked up all those states and say how much revenue do they have per mile that they are responsible for, we're 47th. So 747, a real disparity when you're thinking about trying to maintain those miles in a good condition. And we have been facing this for a number of years. As a matter of fact, as long as I've been chief financial officer for, for 10 years, there's never been a, a time that I haven't talked about the need for additional transportation revenues. And it has covered virtually every type of revenue that you can imagine. And there have been studies done by the legislature, both the House and the Senate, blue ribbon panels, just lots and lots of discussion but nothing that really gels into that, yeah, that's what I want to do. Um, and for example, in 2012, we had a discussion about the tolling of I-70. Some people think that's a great idea. Typically, that's people who think they never drive on it, and therefore, somebody else will pay that. I'm fine with that. Um, the trucking industry, in particular, has been vocally against that option. And Really, it's important that people understand that whether if you toll I-70, it isn't really just the people who are on that road who pay for it. They're passing it along if they are um, truckers in particular. You know, they're passing that along in the, in the price of the goods that they sell to other folks. So we're all sharing a part of that. But I-70 is in a condition. It's one of the very first um, interstates built, actually the very first section of interstate in the United States broke ground in St. Charles. The very first project let on the interstate in the United States was a section of I-44, but the first part to, to break ground was on um, I-70 in St. Louis, or in St. Charles. And we have talked, for example, in 2012 about the possibility of a public-private partnership where you would hire a consortium most likely to rebuild and then operate and maintain that road with tolls for 30 to 50 years. Um, it never got out of uh, committee. It was discussed, but it never got out of committee in the legislature. The two years after that, 13 and 14, the discussion was about a sales tax. First a cent sales tax statewide, and then a three-quarter cent sales tax statewide. One of the limiting factors that we have in Missouri is that those those main sources of revenue, the gas tax, the sales tax on vehicles, and the license fees, they're hardwired to roads and bridges. You can't spend them on rail, you can't spend them on ports, you can't spend them on air or transit or any other form of, of transportation. They have to be spent on roads and bridges. The sales tax had the advantage of you could spend it on all forms of transportation. And whether you're somebody who thinks, I'm in my car, I go where I want to go, that's all I need, or you think, well, other forms of transportation are important. There are segments of our population to which the other forms of transportation are critically important. And not having a reliable and ready source of revenue is problematic as a state. If we had a more robust system, our economics would be better in this state. Um, the three quarters of a cent made it to the polls in August of 14, went down in flames. And so then in 15, what do we talk about? Senator Leibla, who chairs the Senate Transportation Committee, uh, came up with the idea, came up with the idea, talked a lot about the idea of increasing our fuel tax. Started out with a six cent increase. Um, that would be a healthy chunk of money, not only for the state, but also for cities and counties. 30% of that new money would have gone to cities and counties. It would have been dedicated to roads and bridges. But in the end, we have in Missouri the Hancock Amendment and the Farmahan Amendment, which limit the amount your legislature can raise taxes. And when the administration looked at it, they said, can't do it. Six cents, can't do it. Even if it's phased in over multiple years, we interpret that as not legal under, under the Constitution. 
And so they said, you know, if, if it makes it to the governor's desk, we won't sign it because we don't believe it's limited. We don't believe it's legal. So they rolled it back and said, well, two cents is what can get under that Hancock Farmingham limit. That would have been about $78 million a year. Not enough to fix all the transportation issues in the state of Missouri, but a start. Um, that didn't make it to the floor, made it to the floor. It didn't get passed. So that's where we stand today. What will be next year? I don't know. I think we will talk again about transportation revenue, but I don't know what the discussion will be. Um, there is ongoing discussion about the possibility of tolling I-70 or all the roads. In Missouri, we do have <coughs> conditional, not all the roads, all the interstates. Um, some people talk about that at a national level. Uh, Obviously, most people would, would be very much against that, and there are a lot of reasons that they think that that would be a bad idea. In Missouri, when we talk about tolling I-70, don't think Kansas Tollway throwing coins in baskets. Think of something more like they have on the East Coast, a transponder on your windshield or dashboard linked to an account. You drive under a gantry at highway speed. It interacts. It charges that account that you have um, for people who do not have um, one of those transponders. There are cameras that read your license plate linked to the motor vehicle department to send you a bill. Um, I-70, with all of the interchanges that we have, you have to be thinking about something like that because you couldn't set up a toll booth at every interchange. And when we think about this, we think of probably five to six gantries across the 200 miles of, of, of I-70. Um, if you drive between those, you don't get charged at all. You've not passed under a gantry. You can charge vehicles differently. You could charge trucks less if they drove at night when it was less crowded. You could have a different fee for people who are um, local and use use I-70 as a local road. For example, people who live in Columbia drive on it like it was a city street. So if you had a gantry there, you could have a different um, collection amount. But every break that you give somebody means you're collecting less revenue, so of course harder to, to rebuild it. Um, we, we think the cost of that is somewhere between two and four billion dollars depending on how robust a solution you come up with so obviously a significant amount of money and then that's not the end of it once you rebuild I-70 we historically say 44 is about 10 miles behind I-70 in needs, needs of, in terms of needing to be rebuilt and expanded but we've been saying that for probably five or six years so <laughs> that, that clock is running as well um, those are kind of my thoughts on transportation and revenue, and turn it over to Joe, and then I think we're going to do questions. Right. Well, I, I think that was great. I, I'm tempted to just turn straight over to questions, but they pay me to down wish. here, so uh, i got to say something. So hopefully, if you, if you can start the slideshow, hopefully we can see this. The problem with Missouri's highway system, funding the state highway system, has to do with the user revenue base that has traditionally funded the system and the fact that it's been declining. Of course, fuel taxes uh, slightly went up last year, but since 2008, been, it's been declining at about a rate of about 1% per year. So it's probably gonna continue to go down. And the real problem with that is you can slowly lose revenue, but you do fall off a cliff because once you stop being able to match federal dollars, then you don't just lose $1 for every dollar you don't have, you lose an additional $4. So that's why whenever they start talking about this cliff coming up, it's, you see these slowly declining revenue, but then suddenly a huge dip in what they can spend, and that's because of federal matching dollars. And uh, basically, that's what this kind of shows right here. If you look at what's going on right now, I mean, the fuel taxes aren't really going down very much, but federal support really did spike in the last 10 years because of, because of basically the Stimulus Act. But that money is pretty much all been spent at this point. So you can't really expect that anymore. And Missouri could even go below what the federal government would give normally. And that'll give, be given to the other states. Just talked about the, uh, the needs in Missouri. So we've got lower revenue, but do we have lower needs? A lot of people say that people aren't going to drive more. They're going to drive a lot less. There seems to be sort of a schizophrenia out there. Do we really need so much more revenue? Because 
everything is going to be, everyone's going to be driving a lot more, we're going to need a lot more capacity like on I-70, that's been said before, or are people not going to drive anymore? Well, if you can see here, um, the, the top line, the one that's going up and down, the one that dips in about somewhere in late 2011, that's a 12-month moving average of vehicle miles traveled. And the smoother line is, is an average, a three-month average of employment. And you can see that as employment has come up, actually, vehicle mile travels has. And in, actually, in the state of Missouri, we didn't see a, a massive dip in vehicle miles traveled across the state, even though in other states they did kind of see that. I mean, it actually went down, but it came back up was flat and now it's on the rise again and that might be because of low that might be because of low fuel prices but it could also have something to do with the fact that um, the unemployment rate has really started to come down people are working and that's one of the big indicators of how much you're going to drive are you working Let's go to the next one um, this is kind of hard to see this is the uh, there is a plan if Missouri doesn't raise more revenue and um, it's called uh, Tough Choices Ahead, or the 325 plan. And basically that means there's going to be a primary system that's going to be maintained in the conditions in today, and there's going to be a secondary system. And as this map shows, this is Springfield. And the red lines are the routes that are going to be part of the primary system, but everything that's not on there, that's not a red line on there, that's a state highway, is going to be in the supplementary system. And that is going to be allowed to basically deteriorate over time. They're going to be fixing potholes. So it's going to mean that if you drive on one of those roads, which there are plenty in the Springfield area, you are going to have a worse road to drive on. It means that businesses are going to have worse roads that lead up to them. Next slide. One of the big things that I want to point out, and I'll point out again, is that the real dip in revenue is going to come from the loss of federal dollars. We're not suddenly going to drop off a cliff in the user-based revenues for the state. So that means that you know, if we're losing $10, if we need $10 because we're losing $8 in federal funds, well, you don't need to raise $10. You need to raise $2, and then you get the federal funds back and it sort of waylays the funding crisis. So in this case, I mean, we had the three-quarter cent sales tax from before, and that was going to raise, uh, I think about, you know, was it 500 million a year, around there. But you know, you don't need that much to match federal dollars. So it's not as though you're going to dip below. I mean, it would have been. It's always nice to have more money for if you want to spend more money on transportation. But that wasn't necessary to maintain the match. It wasn't necessary to set off the 325 plan. Uh, that's much more modest. Probably below two. Probably below an extra 200 million a year would would waylay any sort of loss in federal matching funds for the foreseeable future. The bad news is that you know, the talk of I-70 and rebuilding I-70 is, is just the tip of the iceberg. There are bridges and roads across the state that are going to need, be, need to be rebuilt from the ground up. And they're not multi-million dollar projects. They can be multi-billion dollar projects, or at least in the hundreds of millions. You have bridges in Kansas City, like Broadway Bridge, you have I-70, and eventually you're going to have I-44, because these roads, they have about a 50-year lifespan before you need to build, rebuild them from the ground up. It's going to be in the same right-of-way, but it's going to need to be a new road. And when they rebuild it, they're going to rebuild it not the same way that it was built 50 years ago. They're going to rebuild it to modern specifications, which means it's going to be an even more expensive road to build than it was the first time around, even if all the, all the material inputs were the same, it's going to be a different road. And that's advantageous for a lot of reasons because it's going to be a safer road and they can expand the highway and do better interchanges so it can be an easier road to use but it's going to mean a lot of money. And there's no money, I mean even if you get to federal matching dollars, there's no money for that. I mean, talk about rebuilding I-70, anything from the $2 billion to $4 billion option, there's just no money. And talk about I-44, this is, actually, um, this is actually a picture from the state highway system map of 1959, and it's the first time 44 pops up on any map in Missouri, or any statewide map in Missouri. You can see it pops up just, just around Springfield. Route 66 is still there. They haven't built it out. Route 66 is still a four-lane, uh, four or two-lane road, actually. And 44 eventually expands down, and it's basically done in the 60s for the most part, through the 70s, and, and of course Route 66 disappears and all becomes 44. 
but that's an older highway. Many of the sections are very old. And just like I-70, it's going to need to be rebuilt from the ground up, and that's going to be an extremely expensive project. So the question becomes, how exactly are you going to, are you going to do this? You can go to the next slide. And uh, this is a map of the daily traffic along I-70 at selected points. All from the left is the, is the, is basically Joplin. To the right is Springfield, or is St. Louis. And you can see in the middle there, that bump is, is Springfield. Uh, traffic from 2000 to 2013, not necessarily growing all that much. So you might not be talking about three lanes across the state like you were talking, like you're talking on I-70, where they're talking about basically taking what is a two-lane road across the state to three lanes the entire way. But still, just rebuilding a road is probably going to be a billion dollars, not a multi-billion dollar project. And somebody's got to pay for it. And every time that we talk about transportation funding in the state, it's a question of, well, what do people want? That's what people ask. But then the second question, how do people pay for it? So obviously, a, a solution that can be used is, is increased revenue. And you know the user funding base goes a long way back in Missouri. In fact, the first state highway maps, or the oldest state highway maps that you can see, proudly stamp that you know Missouri state highways are paid for by fuel taxes, and they're paid for by vehicle fees. They're not paid for by property taxes. That's what it says on the maps. And they were proud of it back then. They wanted to make sure everybody knew it back then. And uh, fortunately, not a lot of people know that now. But you know, just a small increase in the fuel tax is probably enough to stave off a lot of the, a lot of the funding issues that we would have, at least in the near term. And why do, why do we talk about, at the Show Me Institute, we like, we like to talk about the fuel taxes. We like to talk about things like tolling, because they are user fees. There's multiple ways of funding a highway system. But when you base things on user fees, that's going to be something that's economically sound. That's going to be something that's fair. And by economically sound, I mean that transportation is definitely something that people who use it benefit from. But if you use just general taxation to pay for something that's a state highway, something that benefits mostly, you know, mostly people who are traveling more, and definitely any sort of shipment that's going along those roads, if you use general taxes to pay for that, you are in effect subsidizing that system. And you're subsidizing that system at the balance of everything else. And that's going to distort the market. So it might have been cheaper for somebody to ship a good on, on, the, rail, on the railways or on the inland waterways or from, from the airport, anywhere. Or it might have been cheaper for somebody to live a little bit closer to work. It might have been better for society to do that. It might have been the equilibrium for everyone to be at. But if you subsidize the system so that somebody who's going to the movie theaters or going to a restaurant is going to pay for the state highway system, you're going to cause people to do what they might otherwise not do. And that's going to end up costing society in the long run. And that's also really not a fair way to do things either, because if you're somebody who is really committed to using public transportation, or you want to drive less, or you're somebody who wants to buy local, you are in effect being taxed for a system that you're benefiting much less from, or that you would like to pay less into, because it's based on a general tax, not a user fee. Go to the next slide. Um, of course, uh, fuel taxes are an indirect user fee. So just because I buy fuel, I might just drive all on local roads. But some things like tolling is definitely a direct user fee. And You've heard, you've heard talk about like, you know, the, the modern systems of tolling. They're not going to look like older systems. And they have a lot of benefits that can be used, like setting different rates. And you can actually charge, you can actually charge heavy vehicles more than you can charge light vehicles. Like right now in the state of Missouri, it's not just 17 cents for regular fuel. It's 17 cents for diesel fuel as well. And trucks do immensely more damage to the road than a normal, than a normal car would but they're basically paying the same rate per fuel usage. Now they use more fuel, but that's not going to catch up to the, the difference between the usage. And it's kind of an important thing because you sometimes, and I've, I've heard it a lot, you'll hear people say that in Missouri, if you, if you raise fees on trucks, like say I put in a toll and I say it's going to, most tolls in, this, in the country have about double or more the rate for commercial vehicles than they do or for trucks 
than they do for just a passenger vehicle. And we'll say, well, they're just going to pass that right on to the consumer. Well, the fact is that that might not actually be the Missouri consumer. And what this chart basically shows, and this is from, I think this is from MoDOT's state freight plan, is that if you look at the truck freight in the state of Missouri, the majority of it is through traffic by value and um, almost by weight as well. It's just through traffic. And that basically means that the freight moving through the state on the state highway system is not coming from Missouri and it's not going to Missouri. And actually only a small amount of that is inbound. I mean, right there you can see that the inbound traffic, it's, it's hard to see, but the inbound traffic is less than 20%. So if you're somebody who is in the state and you're worried about, well, I raise prices on, on trucks and then it just goes to everyone in the state. Well, that's not actually the case. If you decide that you want to give trucks somewhat less than the cost of what their actual damages to the road, you will in fact be subsidizing producers in Kansas and consumers in Illinois. You're not going to be giving a subsidy to people in Missouri if that were a good idea anyway. <coughs> so can you go to the next slide? And uh, this is actually, and moving back just to I-44, this is a representation of commercial truck traffic on I-44 from the left, Joplin, right, Springfield. And you can see that along most, most of the way along the state, you've got a significant amount of truck traffic. And not only that, by percentage, it usually ranges between 30 and 40% of the traffic at any point until you get to the major metropolitan areas is going to be truck traffic. And anyone who's been on I-44 through the rural areas, they know this. And this is the same, it's the same exact scenario with I-70. And, um, I, and I've looked also at 55, and it's basically the same there. So, you know, you have a system of freight moving across the state. And if you don't try to match user fees with basically the people who benefit from the roads, you're going to end up with a distorted system, and you're going to put other types of freight at a loss in the state. And they're also very competitive. Missouri has a very competitive um, freight rail industry that you lose out when people are going to use systems that are more expensive to the taxpayer just because you've decided that you, you want to go for a general tax. So next slide. So just in conclusion, there are great needs in the state and they're going to continue to be great needs for the state highway system. It's extremely important for people getting around. It's extremely important for freight. And I don't want to say here that you want to gouge trucks for anything. And I don't want to say that you want to attempt to make it impossible for people to drive on I-44 or I-70 or any other state or any other state highway system. But what I would say is that if you can match what is needed with user revenues, that's going to be the way that's most economically efficient and it's going to be fair and that's going to be something that you might actually be able to sell the populace on. And so I think that that is something that people should get behind in the future and, and look for ways to enact. And with that, I'll open up to any questions. Right. We have been working on other ways to match federal funds. As I said, I've been chief financial officer for 10 years. There's never a time we haven't talked about not enough money, what if we can't match federal funds? And, and we are actively within the department doing things to try to help that. One was when we downsized the department starting in 2011, 2010. So we downsized MoDOT by 20% of our workforce, that was 1,200 people. We closed three of our 10 districts, Joplin being the closest one to here. Um, we closed about 130 maintenance sheds across the state. We, we sold off about 750 pieces of equipment. And by doing those things, we save about $100 million a year of just operating expenses. So you can use that to match federal funds, and we have been. An effort that we've started off recently and are getting pretty good at is most maintenance activities. So we have people who work for MoDOT, and they plow snow and they mow the right away and they patch potholes and they put down stripes and they do distance patching on roads. Um, none of those activities were ever things that we could claim federal reimbursement for. 
and we went to the Federal Highway Agency in Jefferson City and, and said, you know, we think some of this is more in the classification of maintenance of the road system than, than just, uh, you know, plow and snow. So we want, to we want to work with you to figure out a way to do that. And we've come up with a pilot program. We're one of five states in the nation who are doing this. And we are using things that our own people do, like putting down the stripes and um, chip seals and distance patching. And we are getting the federal government to reimburse us for that, 80% of the cost of that work. Once that cash comes back in, that it's in the state treasury, I can use that to match future federal funds. So we're, put, we're kind of cobbling together a bunch of things so that I hope when we do our next financial forecast, which will come out in December or January, we'll be able to say, we can't do all the stuff that we would like to do, but we can match federal funds. And then the wheels don't come off the bus. And I think that's where we'll be, but we're still working on the financial forecast. And we've got other things that we're trying, other innovative things to match federal funds because I don't feel like I can, I can sit back and do nothing and hope this will work out, hope the legislature will pass a tax increase because history tells me that that isn't a very good bet. So I think, you know, Joe is still using the slides, but I think um, we don't talk about the 325 plan anymore at MoDOT. We do still talk about primary and supplementary roads. That system does exist, and we put the first dollars that we have for a construction program on the primary roads that interconnect communities and most of the traffic drives on. But for example, because we know we can match federal funds in 17, we have about $200 million more of construction money in 17. And we are currently figuring out, okay, when 17 rolls around, what are the projects we're gonna do? Probably about half of that will be spent on bridges, a topic we haven't even hardly talked about today. We have 10,400 bridges in this state, 641 of them as a, as a count from our last um, annual bridge inspection are what we call critical condition. They are one step away from being closed. Most of those are lo lesser traveled rural bridges, but we are talking about, for example, the Louisiana <coughs> Bridge that crosses the Mississippi River up at Louisiana, Missouri, so north of St. Louis, south of Hannibal. It's in terrible shape. Um, it's about a $60 million project. Illinois would pay half. But if you don't have our half, <laughs> how do you, how do you um, get that bridge replaced? So we have bad bridges all over the state, and we have great maps that show that you could look at and say, oh my gosh, if that bridge goes out, how will the kids get to school? How will the ambulance get to wherever it needs to go? We have bridges now that are so weight posted, they can't carry a loaded school bus. They can't carry an ambulance. They can't carry farm machinery, and yet people drive over it. They take a chance every single day. They're, they're ignoring the weight postings on the bridges. So that is a huge issue, but all of that by way of saying we're going to match federal funds in 17, we're going to spend a chunk of the money on bridges, both primary and secondary routes, we're going to spend the rest of it on road resurfacing projects, but we're not getting to that what's the mega project that needs to be done, and we're not doing the economic development projects that have really been a hallmark of the work that we've done in concert with this part of the state. And I think that's what we have done when we divide into the supplementary and, and primary routes. Um, depending on where you live and what road you drive on, you either like that or you don't. And while we are putting some of the, while we're still putting money on supplementary routes, it's less as a percentage, we're, we're putting more on primaries. So yeah, you will get to the place if, if things just flatten out where You'll, we'll probably hold our own on primaries, and the supplementary routes will continue to deteriorate. But as, as Joe said, you can't just decide, I'm just going to give back to the county, I'm just going to give back to the city. It's an unfunded mandate. But you can't do that. But by default, it's becoming a road that's remarkably in worse shape. When I looked at the 325 plan, I'm just like, well, that's, that's one way of trying to get the local governments to take back those supplementary roads. But I think that 
if we, with a little bit of you know foresight, if we can, if we can try to become to better political solutions, it would be best for everybody if the way of turning over those roads wasn't so that they got so horrible that they needed to, then the local governments needed to take them over. I feel like that, that might be something for the future that might be a political option, but I don't think, I think the best policy is one where you're maintaining the roads and you're slowly turning them back over to local governments. And frankly, I think we need to stop going in the wrong direction first. I mean, I, you know, as, er, as late as 2002, 2003, MoDOT actually took on um, lo what were locally controlled roads in St. Louis City. Because St. Louis City said, why are we the only county that doesn't have, that not all of our state highways are, are actually controlled by MoDOT. And of course now, the complaint is that MoDOT doesn't do what they want to do on those local roads. But, I mean, that's one of those things where you, if you actually look at the number of, of highway miles, just smaller highway miles, I mean, rural miles and urban miles, it's been going up pretty steadily for even the last couple of decades. So just reversing the trend would be something that would put, some, put MoDOT maybe on a better position and say, listen, local governments, we need to come up with a long-term solution. But, you know, something where basically the road is deteriorated and is a mess, I think, I think that's probably something that, if it's all possible, we want to avoid yeah, that. When it comes to like you know the political system, sometimes you can get common sense reforms. I don't think Missouri is. I, I think there's a lot of political problems here, but I don't think that any state, I don't think any political system in the country is just completely unable to make common sense reforms. At least I really hope that that's the case that we can make common sense reforms. Right. Okay. Uh, truckers belong to the International Fuel Tax Association and it's IFTA and IRP. So their plates and their gas is apportioned based on where the miles traveled are. So all the money goes into a central collection point and gets apportioned back to states based on where were the miles I drove, not where did I buy my plate or where did I buy the gas. So. Um, I had I had I talked to the truckers association at lunch last week one day so I said to my staff can you tell me how much of the fuel tax that we actually keep in the state of Missouri and how much of the license fees that we actually keep in the state of Missouri are paid by truckers a little over a quarter of our of the state fuel taxes are paid by truckers in the state of that we actually keep so they, they could be paid by truckers who are licensed in Pennsylvania but they're driving through our state and, and so we're keeping that money a little over a quarter of it a little over a third of the license fees are retained by Missouri so our a third of the license fees that we retain are paid by truckers so it's a, it's a sizable part of the revenue whether it is Dollar for dollar, that's the damage they do, and they're paying for the damage they do. I don't know. But it's, it's probably one of those things that people don't think about because, hey, I, I drive up to the gas pump. I buy, I buy gas in Missouri. Missouri keeps that tax revenue, the state gas tax. It doesn't get apportioned. But trucks are different. It is based on where you drive. So we are keeping revenue from those people who are just driving through the state for the if they drive on I-70, we're keeping that 200 miles worth of revenue. Right. You could do some kind of surcharge. Some states are doing a surcharge just on the truck travel. Um, and, the, and that's an, a, a charge above and beyond what that base rate is, and they keep that. Um, I was in southeast Missouri last week or the week before, and the mayor of a small town said, we have imposed a local diesel tax. If you buy fuel diesel at my town's pumps, we keep it, an extra two cents. So you can do stuff like that. But it, it, it's all part and parcel of um, you know, carving it up instead of trying to find a global solution policy-wise that works. People are, are in some cases, weary of waiting for a global solution, so they're picking at it and, and coming up with their own.